Good morning, police emergency. How may I assist you? Good evening and welcome to your favorite TV program, Ghana Police Watch. This evening, the focus is a unique campaign by Ghana Police to create awareness on how to prevent kidnappings targeting young teenage girls. This follows the kidnapping of three girls, Priscilla Bentum, Priscilla Crunchy, and Ruth Lafquasing in Takradi Western Region. We follow the police team led by DSP Ifia Tenge, Accra Region Police Spokesperson, to schools in Accra for a unique educative as well as fun-filled session with the girls. News of the Takahari kidnappings grabbed the attention of the whole nation and indeed international interest. Ghana Police Watch brought to you an incisive report, including exclusive interviews with the family of the girls and the police that indicated the critical importance of social media in the perpetration of this heinous crime. Kofi is arrested on suspicion of committing a crime. He is taken to the police station where he writes a statement and held in custody pending further investigations. The police can only detain a suspect for 48 hours without charge. Kofi's uncle comes in to secure him bail. Uncle accepts a bail bond of 500 Ghana CDs which he will pay to the courts should Kofi not present himself to the court when requested. Should I pay for the bail? No, you don't pay the police. Bail is free. Only make sure Kofi presents himself to the court when requested. Don't pay for bail. Bail is free. So we're having conversation about social media and the dangers inherent in that site. Social media generally could be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all of that. I have Victoria Quenu who's going to be sharing with us some ideas. She thinks that she's quite careful or quite aware of the dangers when it comes to social media. So she's going to be sharing with us some things that we should know as well. Thank you very much, uh, Victoria. So you feel that you actually are quite aware and conscious of the dangers uh, regarding social media. You yeah. tell us some about some of them. And so I knew that um, people actually trick people on social media to um, either traffic them or lure them to even sell their things. Sometimes they, they would tell you about nine staffs, they're having a company and their company is looking for people to actually work with and all those things. So you might end up actually giving out your information to them. Um, I have, let me share this whole thing. I, okay. I actually saw somebody on um, Twitter and the person was like, oh, the person is from UNICEF. And they were telling me that they want some spill and I actually want the spill. And so they are actually getting my contact so that they can... They, they want some spill, what's that? I want, I want a spill. They were going through some contacts on social media, that's Twitter, and actually happened to have won a spill. So I was asking... They have selected you, essentially. Yes, so I, I was asking how. And they were like, okay, um, so they need my passport information, they need my house address and my bank statements and everything. So I was, it was a bit weird. So I actually went to his um, Twitter. I checked his timeline and everything. I went to UNICEF and I was asking, I was just checking whether UNICEF has an affiliate or something like that. I called, I knew somebody there, so I what's up the person I was like, please, are you is there an ongoing program for young people actually winning some sort of spin or anything? The person didn't really gets back to me. So I went to Facebook and I typed the name of the he person. Had on Twitter. Yes. I typed the name in and I realized that a lot of people have already commented their their um, passport number was taken, their bank account and everything. So when I came, the person actually messaged me because I gave my number. So the person has already WhatsApp me. So when I came back <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I said, oh, thank you very much. And I just blocked the person. And I blocked the person on Twitter too as well. So assuming I hadn't cross-check, assuming I hadn't gone back to maybe Facebook, I just didn't leave myself there. I didn't ask people, even when we said, so the you know, so got back to me later. Assuming I hadn't gone to Facebook to also cross-check what the person was actually saying, I think by this time I would have been a victim of such um, a problem. So I think that 
is about the individual. Sometimes we've been given information on these um, social media platforms. You're being told a lot of nice things. You mean you're going to America, you're traveling and all those things to see greener pastures. But then I think that it has to do with us being cross-checking. But for an individual who doesn't have any information about, okay, cross-checking and information, I mean, they don't know anything about that would actually fall a victim. What made you so want to cross-check? Because when I've had a lot of um, stories, heard stories, stories, I've actually had a lot of programs on um, tra trafficking. I've seen what they actually use in young people. And moreover, I wasn't so convinced of the whole thing because you just can't go through people's um, contact or people's um, timeline and just say that you just selected somebody for just anything and you want the person's bank account, their passport numbers and everything. So it was a bit weird to okay. me. So, I was like, so there are some things that you look out for when you're on social media. Mm -hmm. You share those things with us because it appears there are some best practices that can save everybody else. So I think that one thing is to know yourself. Um, you should also be aware of what you actually want. And I think that people will come in with a lot of fake identity. Right. How, how do you, for instance, select your friends, accept friend requests, or actually go yeah. out there looking for friends? So before I accept you, I go through your timeline. I see the friends you have, what you have been posting. And I always say that it will be safe if you don't actually select somebody you don't know personally. Maybe that person can be your friend's friend. It's not really safe to do that because you don't know what sort of thing they have been having or what interactions they've been having. Or how your friend settled on that it, friend. Yes, yes. That, that friend may probably not have been as diligent mm -hmm. as you are in mm -hmm. selecting the friends. But mm -hmm. you just think, that, okay, that's another mutual yes. friend I just accept. Yes. So if you actually know yourself, you'll be able to know that, oh, this is my friend. But, I mean, this is a friend to my friend. And I don't really know whatever happened between them. So I'm not going to se select the person. But if you want to still select the person as your friend, you can just go through their mutual um, friends. If maybe they have maybe four of your mutual friends being their mutual friend, means that that person is a bit authentic. You can't yeah. tell. But that person has a sort of credibility that you can always trust. And you also go through what they have been posting. Sometimes it's not just about the mutual friends. What they have also been posting. Sometimes it's not in relation to what you do. Maybe you're doing activism, you, you were do, talking about um, child marriage and all those things. Someone is talking about something else that doesn't really relate to what you've been doing. So sometimes it's good to also check what you've been posting. That gives me an idea of what you're looking out for on social media. What yes. are you looking at for on social media? So I'm looking out for um, someone who actually works in line with what I also do, or someone who um, their work actually correlates to what I do. Which is what? Um, so I am more into the activism. I'm a child rights advocate, so I am looking at more of child rights advocacy, um, who is actually given opportunities for young people, especially girls. I'm looking at for those things. So if I'm going through your friend request and you're doing something like gospel or maybe singing, I mean, we don't have that click, and I don't know what I'm going to actually benefit from you. I should get something that, I mean, we'll be having interactions, not just on what I'm doing, but also what you're also doing. How best can we help each other? If there are programs, how do we um, come together to make sure that these programs are being implemented? All so right. I'm looking at that sort of... So those are the kind of people you look out for. Yes. Now let's look at when you're accepting, accepting friend requests. You mm -hmm. say you're looking out for people your mutual uh, friends, mm -hmm. a lot more mutual. So the more mutual friends you have with that person, mm -hmm. the more likely you're going to accept that person. And then what else? Um, and what the person is also doing, aside that, I think I wouldn't want to really accept anyone. If you're doing something in relation to me, and even you're not, I mean, yeah. I would accept you, yeah, yeah. Just but you also go out, go on social media too, or Facebook, for instance, to look for people you want to add to your friends uh, list. How do you decide? Is it how handsome the guy is looking or uh, how, how do you go about it? Um, I don't look at the appearance. I mean, appearance are very deceptive. So yeah. I feel basically the things that I've outlined earlier, I feel those are the things I really look out for. And me in particular, I'm not someone who actually goes to my like at friend or friends and just like want to make friends out be there. Sometimes, you know, Facebook gives you the notices or um, informs you that, oh, would you want to be friend? Maybe you just 
met the person, you had a chat with it. Would you give you the information? Would you want to be friend with this person? Yes. Maybe I know the person, so would you, let me just send the person a friend request. But not to maybe sit down and take my phone and be like, today I want to get a lot of friends. So I would Facebook will say people you may know. Yes. And yes. then you want to yes. know. Now, yeah. let's move on from there to engagement with these people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you get people sending you inbox messages. What sort of messages would come through to you? So I, I often get, okay, so I've seen a lot of things you've been doing and I want to get involved. And I'm like, what do you want to get involved in? Okay, so I tell them what I do, like a lot of volunteerism activities and most people want to actually get into it. So maybe when I had their programs, like the way I'm saying, their programs, anything at all, maybe you post it there, this is what you want, so you can just actually get involved. Do you get people hitting on you? I haven't had... That. that maybe because I am very careful when it comes to selecting of my friends. How many I, friends do you have on Facebook? 1,216. How many do you know personally? <laughs> it will be difficult <laughs> because I mean, as I said earlier, about a hundred, it'll be more than 100. Okay, maybe five, 500. 500. Because you're very careful about who you yes, choose, yes, and most of them to are my friends' friends, and which I have. They have gone through a lot of scrutiny, so I okay. can really <laughs> say that this person is a very um, good person. But aside that, I think I've had um, a lot of friends actually complaining of the type of things they face on social media. Some being um, abused on social media. Abused as in? Um, so some of them, even the way people speak to them, like you just insult them, go to a PM and just insult you. And for no reason, I've had people complaining about. And I always say that because of the way they go through about their friend requests, every person you just want to be friends so that people know. You know, when you have a lot of friends, people know that you're also the Facebook person, yeah. you're a social media yeah. guru, and people want to associate with you. But it's not just about that. It's about what you're also going to get from these friends, how they are going to influence you, and also, what do you seem to achieve at the end of becoming friend with somebody? I mean, it should be something mutual that you want to work on it or maybe for future um, program or future progress. I mean, you want to mm. really go on with that. You thing. shared that experience with us about somebody approaching you and wanting to offer you a role, some UNICEF mm -hmm. uh, thingy. That, you would say, you were spared, you got off. Mm -hmm. But was there any or has there been any occasion where you probably were vulnerable and you became a victim? Mm. Not that you remember. Yes, I do. Okay. So my first Facebook, <laughs> my first Facebook account, I have created another one. So my first Facebook account, um, I don't know what happened that morning. I, I hadn't logged on because I didn't have bundle. So I had a call and the person was like, oh, okay, um, hello, can I have a a number just like you, something like that. So can you just give me, I was resetting my password and it didn't really work out. So can you just, I have sent a password or something, so can you just send it to me? So it was a whole something. I didn't really understand what the person was actually saying. And <laughs> I don't know whether it was my fault because I didn't actually also find out what, I didn't call back to find out what he was um, asking for. So I saw, when I got up, I just saw the password something certain. So I'm okay, let me just call the person, just give the thing to the person. So I just call the person and I gave the password, whatever settings to the person. Ah, I was just sitting there and I was like, did you just know what you have done? Like, what's happening? So I just rushed to go and get a bundle. And I tried to log into my Facebook, it wasn't. No, no, when the person was actually working on my Facebook, trying to reset my password and everything to his, and I didn't know of it. So I just gave out. And I don't know. How I don't did know the person come by your number? It was so strange. So I was just asking, like after I had, <laughs> I didn't get it. After I had given the password and everything to the person, I just said, I was like, how on air did I do this? Like, How, how dumb could I be? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice. So, and I didn't want to tell people about it because I know how people would just insult me for being um, vulnerable to that. But I, I know that I'm not just the only person that this thing happens to. It can happen to a lot of millions. Sometimes, your, your mind wouldn't be on what you're even talking about. Your mind would be on something else and you're trying to figure out something else and somebody will just call you and you will just give in with it. But sometimes you have to be patient with those things. Assuming I had, I had relaxed or maybe my mind was in the right position that moment, I don't think I would have done yeah. such a thing. But I don't know what happened. I was like, 
And so I, the person blogged my Facebook, had access to it, changed the name and everything. So I had to create another Facebook account and also tell people that that's not the Facebook that I used to have. Like, people should look out for this. But that thing. person would then steal your identity, essentially, and begin engaging with your friends. And, you know, you, those friends could be vulnerable. Because so they, they, they will be chatting, this person will be chatting with your friends, mm -hmm. and your friends will be thinking, it's you. Yes when really it's somebody else and they probably may give information about you and some other personal details. So what I really did was that immediately I realized that the person has taken my, I mean, my Facebook. I tried getting some of my friends on Facebook and I told them, so they were all reporting. So like they were all sending disclaimer and all those things. So Facebook actually gave him like, oh, the person had already damaged their account. So there was no way I'm going to be able to retrieve. Sometimes when you're sending these disclaimers, you can be able to retrieve your account. But Facebook was like, the way that person has worked on my account, there was no way I was going to actually retrieve my account. But my friends were also alert because of the other friends that I had also get But Facebook would have blocked the account. Yes, it? but they didn't do that. And I don't know what, I mean, sometimes I feel that these, um, I software or social media platform should be able to work on these things, but it sometimes hurts me when you. Did you ask them to block it? My friends who were reporting actually asked. I mean, they gave me the information that I mean, Facebook sends them that um, the person has damaged and nothing could have been done about it. So she just leave it and create another. That was the option they gave to my friends. So it means I had to just create another account. But as you mean, I mean, Facebook was on their toes. They were doing everything possible. I think that they would just block it. And these, what other people use and creating different accounts and they forge and, I mean, Facebook couldn't or can't do anything about it. And people are being vulnerable each and every day. So I think that sometimes these systems should be up and doing so that when these things are being um, reported, they can just do something about it so that people wouldn't be vulnerable to such cases. Do you get people asking you on, on Facebook, for instance, asking you to go out with them or meet them at some places? Um, personally, no. But I've had someone actually saying that. So she's a female and she was like, oh, she met this person on Facebook and all of a sudden the person was like, okay, giving addresses to where they should meet, they should go out and all those things. So it was actually um, something that UNICEF was running, um, a program to ask what young people think of um, social media. Mm -hmm. And so when we got to where we asked her of the question, she was like, um, she was actually going to meet up with a person, but then she didn't know how come she met us and she was discussing. So all of a sudden, as we were like saviors to yeah. Hey, at that moment, because she was actually going to meet the person that um, she met on Facebook. So we're just giving her some of the education. And sometimes you just don't have to meet somebody on Facebook and then when they ask you out, you're just going because you don't know what might happen. The person said that, insisted that if she's come, she'll come alone. She shouldn't come with anybody else. So yeah, yeah. you can just imagine what would have happened if the lady had gone alone. So sometimes it's, it's, it's disturbing if um, you get other things like that. If you not really conscious of what you're doing on social media, you might end up getting a lot of things. So from what you're telling me, you started off, uh, you almost fell prey mm -hmm. to somebody who was luring you with UNICEF, but you apparently are doing something with UNICEF now. Um, not really, but um, when it comes to maybe programs on young people, they actually get in touch with and they engage young people, you yes, and engage properly. Us. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, uh, Victoria, for sharing your experience with us. Thank right. you. Here with me in the studio, I have Ikia Ousu Ansan, who is a girls prefect of Accra Girls. Welcome to our studios. Thank you very much. And I also have Efia Tenge, who's the Accra Region Police Spokesperson. Welcome to. Thank you. It's, it's about this campaign that the police is waging. It has to do with the kidnapping of the three girls in Takradi. After it had happened, the police realized that a lot of it had to do with how the girls were engaging with these people on social media. And so the police decided that it would be good to engage in a campaign or embark on a campaign to sensitize the young ladies. If you're thinking, it's going to tell us all about it. So tell us more about this campaign that you embarked on. Yes, um, we have all waged a, a campaign um, against um, the kidnapping we witnessed in 
some parts of Ghana, specifically the Western region. And we have also seen some campaign by uh, media houses, especially that of uh, Joy News, some uh, women advocates and the rest. The police is also, um, also doing its best um, to see and also support in the way of um, educating members of the public, especially their targeted groups. And so the Accra Regional Police Command, um, spearheaded by the Public Affairs um, Unit, began this uh, campaign where we had two phases. The first phase uh, was to deal with the schools, there's, um, the girls' schools in Accra. And also after that, we moved to the missed schools. Uh, right. If we talk about kidnapping, it is not only about girls. Um, it is about um, anybody can be any age group um, it can be boys as well. So we started with a number of schools in Accra and we began with um, the Accra Wesley girls where we, we decided to change the presentation skills right. this time around. We wanted to capture the full attention of our audience. So as a team, we sat down and uh, looking at um, students, you know, who may be so vulnerable in this kind of situation, what was the best approach right. in getting their best of attention? And so you, you we chose decided drama. drama yes, right. that we know it. We've all been there, and uh, we we believe that using the drama would be able to send, send a message, message right across to the target audience. Yeah. So we sat down as a team, we looked at the various rules, and we even came up with uh, four strong security points. And by so doing, we also included some input from the Western Regional Command. And so everything in the, in yeah. the security tips was not something that was, you know, came out of, you know, um, our thinking alone. We had to also engage some other people. So you looked, essentially, you looked at the facts of the case. Yes, the facts and decided of the case. to put it all together in a exactly. drama. Exactly. And Ghana Police Watch was there uh, to go film some of the drama engagements that, that happened, the dramatization of the event. And so let's uh, take a look at that. Hi, Don Dada. I'm fine, thank you. Descriptions. I like them all. Hmm. I mostly go to the mall and have fun. So you saw the dramatization that went on. Now we also engaged some of the students as well as the teachers on the messages that the police were seeking to transmit to them and if they actually got the messages. Let's watch their responses. You no, know, um, as youths, when we see, we remember, but when we hear, we forget. So bringing the sketch in was very educative. We were able to learn the techniques and skills that was needed. Um, if you are in that case and you, you find yourself in trouble, you can remember some of the skills that you learned and then apply them to you so that you'll be saved. We've been hearing of this kidnapping issues and cases, but we, we happen to know it's from Takra there, but it hasn't yet gotten to Accra. And because it hasn't gotten to Accra, some, some of the students, we take it to be, um, okay, it's in Takra there. It's not going to happen in Accra. So let's just fool around, do this, do that. Very impressive. 
very impressive. I was particularly happy that this program is coming from the security unit, particularly the police, who are supposed to be the protectors of the citizens. In fact, the drama showcased so many lessons that I think not only the students are to benefit from, but we the teachers and the parents as well. So I advise my fellow students out there that if they want to be on social media, they should do it wisely. They shouldn't keep on posting their um, information. Oh, here I'm here at the moment. I ain't seen more at the moment. I'm this, I'm that. Because it normally gets because you have viewers, you have friends, and just accepting um, friend requests from people they don't know. All right, so Ikea, you tell me, how did you find the drama? Okay, it was very educative and entertaining. We are very happy how it was put forward because we would normally expect someone to come and stand there and rattle or blah, 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 and it yeah. would be boring. But in this case, there was drama, there, it was funny, it was educative, and we really learned a lot from it. Okay, I want to understand your social media profile. Which of the sites are you on? Oh, I'm on Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Twitter, and Facebook. Oh, all of that. <laughs> and how many friends do you have on Facebook, for instance? On Facebook, I have friends ranging from 800 to 1,000 people. Oh, you have up, up to about 1,000 yes. friends. Yes, yes. And are these people you know personally? Are these your friends' friends? Sincerely speaking, I only know a fraction of them. The others what, are... What's the fraction? What's that fraction? Just a tiny bit of them. Practically... 2015. Oh, wow. Whom I know very well. Okay. The others are people you meet online who want to just make friends. So they send you the friend request and then, then you, you just accept. accept. Yes. And you also send friend requests. You see somebody yes. you like, maybe like a young boy you like. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you send him a friend request. Yes. So are you going to send me a friend request? <laughs> <laughs> that depends. Oh, it depends on yes, what? Yes, it depends. <laughs> it depends on what? The first thing I will. I would check is maybe your profile pictures, um, the other groups you are active on, your mutual friends, something like that. What do you use social media for? To interact with other people, post what you do online for people to see who you are and where, how you are, just for like talking to other people, meeting other people. Why do you, you say you have about 20 friends you know, yes. and then there are what? Over 800. Yes. You don't know. Why do you want the 800 and indeed the rest of the world to know what you're doing? You know, it is a trend. It is like when you have a friend, like personally, and then she becomes your friend on Facebook. She has another friend who she introduces to, who has another friend, and it goes on and on to become friends with all those people. Right. And then making people know where you are, how you are, just makes you feel good around people. It's like a hype. It makes you feel cool yeah. that people know like, that you are. Yes. What, was, what was the last interesting update you put about put out about where you are? Um, I was in my family at Velaju AM and PM having supper. And then you posted that. Yes. You know, what, what exactly? How did you exactly did you put it? Like family time, like family you time, like no other. Yeah. <laughs> because you want the world to yes. know. But you see, the Madame Ifiatenge, you, you talk about, this is one of the reasons why you're engaging or embarking on this campaign, because the young girls are vulnerable, and yet they put out so much information, which sometimes people can, can take advantage of. Yes, um, that is um, even one of the reasons we have to organize this campaign, because um, they are so vulnerable and the social media is a platform for socialization it actually promotes uh, socialization as she was saying she kn she knew or she knows a very uh, small fraction yes. of the entire people who follow her so it has no limitation to its users and anybody out there at all who means harm to you can get to you through the social media and if you watch the drama, we even started by um, posting the lady, the main character in the drama, posting some information about her, what she does. And she was even attracted to a friendship request 
because of the photograph she saw. Okay. There were certain things this lady admired about men. Men oh, with beard, with this, with that. Okay. And we, <laughs> we, we did a lot of work, you know, as, as a team to realize what the young girls and even the boys are more vulnerable to and what makes them want to be part of the social media. So by so doing, we made sure that every bit of it was part of this drama. Right. So at the end of the day, you realize that they identified themselves so much with what was going on and the reality of it. And this, I believe, has been some weeks now, but you can see it's still so fresh in her yeah. mind. Yeah. And that is what we are looking for. Let them come, let us practicalize the entire scenario to them. Let them come to identify with this scenario. And let's see what they do that we feel does not go down so well with them. Because when the problem is created, then it means that the police would have to do more to be able to save these girls. So why not be proactive? Why not go out there with a the very message that gets these girls to be entangled in a situation that they did not even know of. So that is it. Yeah. You can see even in a home, you can think that oh, as a parent, you know that, oh yes, my son is in the house or my child is in the house because I know, yes, we have a wall, it's a world building and she's safe. In there, the child is using a phone. And you parent, you as a parent do not have control of where the child visits. And this is a site that do not have geographical jurisdiction. The child is exposed to all manner of people out there. We should also not forget that the criminals also use this for their own gains. Yeah. So what information does the child know to be able to arm him or herself to stay away from these people? This is it. These are the kind of people I'm looking for. You gave you give a certain, a certain, a certain example about you being home and yet you thinking that your child is home and yet she's on Facebook and so it takes her out of the house. It's a typical case of wada na unaigua bonting. Exactly, like wada su unaigua bonting. Okay. You understand? So you might think that, oh, my, my, my child is okay. You think you've locked up your, all your doors. But there's a whole lot <laughs> happening out there. So the child sometimes even comes out from his or her room and she's so happy. She's been conversing or chatting with, Engaging with people. A, a whole lot of people out there that she herself do not even have an idea of who she's been exposed to. Vital information is given out. Whether she's traveling, the, 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 the criminal out there, out there knows about it. Where she went to, what she does. So it will be very easy for the person to also plan and make sure that they target their messages to shoot yeah. what you are there. Because what I put there is what I am, really. And that is, that is who I am. This is where I go. This is where, what I fancy. So if I want to get the vulnerable student out there, the social media is one area. This is not to say that it is bad to use social media. It has its own merit yeah, and demerit. There's certainly some positives. So we that. are looking at the vulnerability of the child. Who thinks that is a trending phenomenon? This is what is the way to go. And therefore, if I am there, it's a hype, you know? At the end of the day, my friends should see that I'm doing this, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So why not engage them? Why not tell them what they need to do and what not they, they or what they don't need to do and all that? Yeah. So that hopefully they will learn something from it and change their ways. Now you talked about how you went up with the family and you yes. posted family, family, family time out AM, PM. Do you appreciate, or now that you've been taken through that drama, do you think that you should have done things differently or would you do things differently? Yes. Um, concerning how frequent I post pictures, for example, when I'm in the house and then I'm bored, I can just take a picture and then post the location or post what I'm doing. Now, from this drama that we watched back in school, it sensitizes me, do not post when it's not necessary. 
it is not to say that don't post like let your status be blank or something but when you don't have anything necessary to do don't you just do it you, you, you talked about uh, quite apart from kidnapping do you appreciate that by telling everybody else out there that your family is out of the home people or somebody who has some ulterior motive could say okay then that's an empty house that I can go and rob. Have you thought about that? <laughs> no, not at all. But do you appreciate that? Yes, I really do. So how is that going to make you do things differently? Posting status. Yes, it's, it's, it's cool to post your status and let people know that you're here and all that. And you can still do that without necessarily giving away so much information. So try another update. Okay. Still AMPM. <laughs> I would I would take pictures but not necessarily post the location mm. how about Something you just like put out a.m. p.m. having a good time a.m. p.m. without saying that you are there with the family okay you see anyway but let's talk I mean I'm sure after Maybe this now you know you are giving the time so when you're giving the time, it means that you are telling people that as we speak now, this is where you are. You understand? Maybe you can take the photograph and post it maybe later, you know, or That's without giving the specific it, yeah. time or life, giving life information <laughs> about you, you know. So Let us maybe El try earlier, and do earlier it. Tonight. Mm -hmm. Earlier tonight. Earlier tonight, a.m. p.m. So you know this, this show goes really far. And uh, you're a pretty girl and... People are going to watch and it's going to make you even more popular. So you're going to see a lot more friend requests. How do you intend to handle that, for instance? Okay. I would, when I receive friend requests, I just confirm all. You confirm all? I confirm all. But this, there's one thing that I really learned to do on Facebook and I learned it from my sister. I don't respond to all messages. For example, messages from people who attend, quote unquote, as foreigners. You know, some of them having foreign names. I don't respond to such right. messages. But hold on. Why do you want to respond to all friend requests? Sometimes I just want to clear that side, you know, when it's full. But y you don't know these people. Yes. There'll be people who may have ulterior motives. You know people can post any photos at all. Yes. Which may not necessarily be, be, the person. be, be them. Now, one, one thing that we, we learned on this show by when we spoke with uh, a technology analyst, uh, Maximus Ametogo, he talked about the fact that there are some things you should look out for. He said, look out for people who have taken photos with others. So if you look at their profile, and they happen to have taken photos with others, then you, you can tell that the profile picture and the, prof the photos in the other profiles or in the other photos are identical then you know this is a real person. Is that something you're, you would want to do? Yeah. So we can just take a photo right now. I'm going to get closer <laughs> to you. Okay. Okay, nice. So now that you've taken the photo, what would you do, do with it, for instance? I will post it immediately with its location. <laughs> yeah. So people will know I'm with this personality. Well, that's cool. Like you hypo. You hypo. You hypo, you day, Charlie, you day, pa. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll be like, I'm on set with the celebrity. You know, just passing time with the celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> and then you add the location yes. to it. Right, but the, from the conversations we've had, obviously you have picked up some lessons. You've, you've talked yeah. uh, with us about some of those lessons. What are some of the other lessons that you have picked up? Okay, so apart from not just um, posting your location anyhow, also, I learned you shouldn't also respond to messages from strangers or people you don't know. And then don't post out your personal information so much. Let's talk about the, the messages bit. So people engage you. They send you messages. What sort of messages do they, how do they put their messages? Normally from older, older men. Older men? Mm, hello, baby. <laughs> hello what? Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> how do you take that? I block you. Oh, okay. I block you because I find it to be very rude and nasty to do that. Why do you think they're being nasty? Because on Facebook, you know, you have your profile there, you have your age and all that and all those stuff.
but when you check the profile of these people, they are aging 53, 43, grown enough to be your father or even your grandfather. So calling me that really puts me off and then I'll just block you. We targeted the girls' schools as part of the first phase. And in Accra, we had um, the three girls' schools. We were able to do two. The third one had uh, challenges. And um, even now, we have halted. In fact, it's a whole annual program. Tell us about your experiences with your friends. What are some of the stories you've heard about the encounters on social media? Okay, there was this one funny encounter that my brother had. He had this friend who was living in Tampa Valley. And then... Tampa an, Valley? Yes. And then there's an unknown person sent him a message to stay away from somebody. And he was like, he doesn't know the person. He was like, I know you. He mentioned his name, everything about him, and told him that he would curse him because he was a malam. And then it was so funny because that boy is very, very active. He will post when he's eating, he will post when he's at his friend's house, he will post anywhere, anything about him, he will post. And the kind of friends I work with, it was it, it becomes annoying sometimes because sometimes there's no need to post. Someone will post and you're brushing your teeth or post and then you are just bored. And such information gave that unknown person the chance to give the information. He got a about good profile of... He mentioned his name, where he stays, his school, his friends, everything. Oh, wow. It was, it was, it was funny, but it was very serious. That must have been scary for him. Yes. He was actually afraid. So and then they saw it at school. The thing that I think we should sensitize about is not everything is cool. Some, some, ser some issues are very serious because the boys started sending screenshots around and then they laughed about it. But putting all jokes aside, it wasn't funny because it was very strange for someone who doesn't know you to have personal information about you. All right. Is there any way, it, would you want the police to adapt or change their message, modify their messages in any way at all to better reach you? Okay, personally, and then the people I work with, for me to tell my friend, go like the Ghana police page, you'll be like, ah, why? So I would think the people that we look up to or the people that we like a lot, like celebrities, all those people, if they are included in the program, for example, Carbell had um, their first balloon lifting and then Adam was included. And because Adam was included, a lot of youth were very happy about it. So including such celebrities will make us connect and feel like, okay, Lamem is doing this, or okay, this celebrity is doing this, then it's very serious because they are taking action. Right. So that's um, something that's, that's that you, you a very a very good inputs yes. in there, mm. you know. So, so I think it, it's it's noted. Let's talk about some of the other key messages. Uh, we, yes, we, uh, we with social media. also looked at um, taking odd job offers from people you hardly know. You know, usually after school, or even when they are on visa, some of them want to be engaged to get something and at least uh, something to fend for themselves. And so people keep promising them some job offers. And um, you realize that you may not even have what it takes to be in that kind of job that you're looking for. But uh, people promise you, tell you that, oh, they will give you this. And you also need to be very careful when, when it comes to that. And uh, people who also promise you heaven on earth, uh, promise you a whole lot of things is what they'll be able to give you what have you done for the person, for the person, you know, to be promising you some of these things? When you see these key indicators, you know, these red flags, these are the things we need to be looking at so that we... Yeah, but, uh, we okay, are have you so come across such people making, you know, throwing all sorts of offers at you? <laughs> yes. Such as? Like, I'll take you up tea. <laughs> Those kind take of people. Take you Abroad up tea. Up tea? Yeah. That's what you call abroad. Up <laughs> tea. Up town? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'll okay. Take you I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what are some of the other things? Mostly, I buy you a phone, and then when you get oh, iPhone, the phone, yes, iPhone X, yes. every teenager is crazy about it. Which which phone model do you use? Um, Samsung Galaxy S6. Okay, so you love. I would like to update. Update. Yes, to upgrade my level. So if somebody makes that offer at you on, in three or inbox, it is very expensive. And what have I done for you to give me? My father hasn't bought one for me, so you could, where do you know me? What did I do for you? So for these you are some of the questions something? you're going yeah. to ask. But normally we don't ask that, we just see iPhone 6, iPhone X, he's giving me, okay, let me take it. I'm giving whatever he needs. 
Oh. Yes. Whatever he needs whatever, as he Whatever, just for. to get the phone. For example, um, he said he will get you an iPhone X. You just have to meet up with him and go out with him. Going out with him will, by all means, result in him wanting something or something from your body. And I know people who do that. Just, oh, really? Yes, your friends? I have friends who go about giving out their bodies just for simple, simple things. And they get those. And they things. get those things. And then sometimes you're like, okay, what if I go and do this? Because you don't go the hard way and then now you have this. Yeah. So that attracts, gives, it gives you that pressure to also engage in it and then have those things that they do. It's important then, I mean, See? that you, you let them know See, about all these exactly. uh, offers that... Uh -huh. These offers that usually come to them, as she's saying, you know, we will give you that, but you don't know the intention of the person. Yeah. Some may go, even if they have to give out something to get whatever they need, they may come back. It may not be the same with all. So we have to let the information flow. We have to let them know what they are doing and what the consequences are out there. Yeah. So all of this is necessary because you want to give the girls or these people, these victims, a way out when they find themselves in it. But isn't, shouldn't we rather or shouldn't we also be telling them that you have a choice not to meet these people in the first place? Yes, it's, it's equally good, very good. It is important that as this campaign is being waged, we tell them right in the face that no, where you are going is very slippery. These are the things we have identified. Why would you meet somebody you hardly know? The person arranged... A complete stranger. A complete stranger, meet me here, meet me there. Then you, you get up, dress up, and you are out there. We are talking about realistic situations. It has happened. And we are out there educating the girls, educa educating the boys. It might not necessarily be the girls alone. But all of us, especially the youth who are the most vulnerable, that stay away, especially we don't know them. Because they may come up with very uh, juicy packages of what they want to do for you and all that. Please listen to your instincts. If your instinct tells you that, no, don't go, please stay away. It's as simple so, as that. As much as possible, don't accept these uh, offers and don't go meeting strangers, people you hardly know. But what would, what would make you want to meet this stranger? Because it's not all the time that they're going to make offers at you or say they're going to offer you an iPhone and the rest, but they just want to meet you. What would make you want to do that? What will actually attract you to meet strangers was Maybe the guy looks good. Yes. The pictures where he goes, how he spends, how interesting he is, will attract you, okay, I see that this person is like it, then let's meet up. Maybe he will make me also be like that or feel like that. But you appreciate that as the conversations, per the conversations we've had, there are people who can put up a setting image or profile when really that's not yes, who they are. Yes, that's not who they are. Because lot, if somebody tells you, that. takes a, a photo or just puts a status and says AM, PM, it's possible they're not there, <laughs> but they're giving you the impression that they are there. And they can, you can geotag, you can put your location yeah, anywhere, anyway. even though you may not be there. This is what is making us very vulnerable because a lot of us believe in such things. You know, when you see somebody's post and then a person's location, it doesn't even come to mind that what if it is the person is there, that is just it. So it makes us more vulnerable. So if you don't know the person, why meet the person? If you just want to look at the person's status and then you see nice, nice places, just look at it and go somewhere. You don't necessarily have to go and meet up with the person because you don't know whether it is him or it is another one. Because even people catfish people saying they are men, but actually they are women. Yes, that's another thing. And have you, have, do you know of any encounters where you, your friends or maybe yourself, you had the impression this was a person and yeah. you met the person and it was somebody. Yes, different. I went for vacation classes and then there's this girl that some of the boys were chatting with. And then the guy came to sit by me and was like, they don't know it's me. And then I just looked at him and was like, yeah, it's me. I just created that profile for them to think. And he was vibing with another guy. 
So when he came to class, <laughs> his friend just told him that, see, the girl you are talking is the guy sitting by you. And then it was, it was so funny. The guy was very pissed. Oh, no. <laughs> But anyway, but these are some of the stories that need to go out for people to get to know that you may be interacting with somebody you think is some a particular person. It turns out that uh, the, person. the person may be, and you may have been giving so much information to the person. Yeah. So, Ikea, what would be your final message to your friends who are watching the show and uh, knowing that you're going to become very popular after this? Okay, my message to my friends and the youth out there is, we should take matters that are serious to hand. We should be careful what we do on social media. Don't live your life on social media. You have a life. Do what is necessary and then don't talk or meet up with strangers that you do not know. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, if you're taking it. Yes, um, I think we have said it all here. Uh, it's also very important. And as much as we still trying to get to every corner you know, to give them the information they need. Um, I also think that um, the authorities, the various institutional authorities should also make room for us to educate these ones. And I think there's been very uh, fruitful discussion. There's a lot of things we have also taken from this discussion and all these would be taken into consideration to make it more, um, um, let me say, very effective, you know, in the other schools. So what we want to say is that um, the security of you is very important to us. And everything we are doing now is for your own safety. And uh, therefore, if we are out there telling you what is happening, uh, we have to believe so that we don't find ourselves in a very uh, compromised situation where it is very difficult you know, for the police to handle. Um, I think that we should, you should give us the, your arms, you should open your arms wide for us to educate you, for, for you to be safe. All right, thank you very much. Uh, if you think it is uh, Accra Region Police PR, and the campaign will continue, so be on the lookout for the campaign in your various schools. And this particular show would encourage you, the young ones who are watching, to actually share. It's going to be put out on on uh, Facebook who want you to share it with your friends as much as possible because the messages need to go out there for everybody else to be safe. You out there in the regions, the campaign may eventually get to you, but in the meantime, if you can share for your friends to get to see the show, then we can send the message out there so that all the girls will be safe. Thank you too, uh, Kia Uswansa, uh, yes. the girls prefect of Accra uh, Girls for uh, being on the show, you've been a wonderful uh, guest, and I'm going to be friends with you on, on social media. At least you know me. <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, and thank you too for watching uh, another edition of uh, Ghana Police Watch. You have a good night.